we're just sailing out from that beautiful anchorage on the southern end of Sky, and we have a beautiful day for sailing today. Blue skies, perfect wind for sailing. We're under full sail on a reach, and we're actually heading out to the Outer Hebrides again. We're heading for Barra. The reason we're going there is we think we might have an opportunity to sail out to St Kilda. The weather on one of the models looks really good for it. The other model, not so much. We're not sure we're going to be able to sail all the way out there, but we're going to sail out to Barra. We're going to pause there. We don't know whether we're going to pause there for overnight or we're going to pause and then go on, but hopefully we can get a updated weather forecast, which will give us a real steer on whether or not we can go out to St Kilda. But fingers crossed, it might be the opportunity. It's always really hard to make the decision when the weather is good as to where to visit because there are so many options on the west coast of Scotland and we could have very easily spent another few days either in the Anchorage or on the west coast of Sky, on the hills or just admiring the view. But we can get back to Sky via road in the future if we ever want to, whereas this might be the only time that we're sailing the west coast of Scotland on Florence and so that's why we're heading out to St Kilda because you can only get there by boat. We have sailed over 50,000 miles on our 37-foot sailboat, Florence, seeking out stunning tropical locations around the world. Now we are looking for something different, sailing north to explore the spectacular scenery and wildlife in colder waters. We are Matt and Amy, and this is sailing around Britain. We've had a fairly fast sail to Barra so far. We're on a reach, so Florence has been doing seven knots for part of the passage. And it's like a different day to when we set off though, because the cloud has come in and the temperature has just plummeted. We've got about seven miles left to go, and it's been about a 40 mile sail in total from the Isle of Skye. But we've never been out of sight of land because we've always been able to see the mountains of Skye or now we can see the hills of Barra in front of us. We've chosen an anchorage in the sound of Barra, which is protected from the way that the wind is blowing at the moment, but we're still not sure how long we're going to stay there. It could be a, a few hours or it could be overnight. Uh, hopefully, though, we'll get the opportunity to head out from there through the sound of Barra and to St Kilda. Well, unfortunately, when we arrived here in Barra, 
we re-looked at the weather forecast and it had changed and our weather window to sail out to St Kilda had really closed on us and there was forecast to be some quite strong winds in the time that we planned to be out there. So we decided to explore a little bit further down the island of Barrow and we've come down here to Vatase Bay which is stunning. It's got a magnificent beach here and the Scottish weather after that rubbish August it's blessing us with blue skies and sun 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 so this is an awesome place to explore. beach in the Bahamas. This is Cow Beach on Barra. The beaches here are absolutely spectacular. Beautiful white sand beaches and they're pretty much empty apart from the cows. We've been keeping an eye on the weather for another opportunity to get out to St Kilda and it looked like there was going to be one tomorrow but we've just been looking at the latest forecast this morning and the weather has now changed again so it now looks like instead of being a good wind to sail out it's going to be a flat calm tomorrow. So we've made a decision we're actually going to sail overnight tonight to get out there. It wasn't the original plan, the original plan was to sail during the day but that means that when we get there we should have a nice calm day sunny weather and also the swell is dying off so it's going to be a really small swell which is important for being able to get ashore in St Kilda. If there's a big swell often the waves on the beach are so big that you can't get ashore. So fingers crossed we can sail there overnight tonight and it'll be good when we get there tomorrow. The plan is to sail out through the Sound of Sandre and then head directly for St Kilda, a distance of 68 miles, hoping to get there before the wind completely dies tomorrow morning. It would have been better if we could have both cooked and eaten dinner before we left but we wanted to get through the sound of Sandre and out into clear water uh, before it got dark so I uh, just had to finish dinner off underway but it's not too rough yet so it's not been too much of a problem. We're having chicken pasta with roast vegetables because
because it's easy to eat with one utensil. You ready? Yep. Thank you very much. Can you take mine? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's more if you like it. So we're now out to the open Atlantic Ocean, but it is fairly calm. There's only 2.2 meter swells with about an eight and a half second period between them, which means we can sail over them rather than slamming into them. And because it's been quite light winds, not too much of a wind chop. Although at the moment we do have a little bit more wind than anticipated. 15 knots of wind. We're supposed to have 10, but that's all good. We to get there a bit quicker. into our night watches and I would normally have made up a sea berth before we set off just because everything is so much easier when the boat isn't bouncing around but we're there so yeah better go to bed it's only what seven o'clock but I've got three hours to get some sleep whilst Matt keeps watch and then we'll swap over Two o'clock in the morning, I'm just coming to the end of my night watch. It's been a really easy and beautiful watch. Fairly light winds, but we've been getting lifted, so it looks like there's a possibility that we won't even have to tack. But unfortunately, just as Matt's getting dressed, the wind has totally shut off. We've now got seven knots, and uh, we're making about two knots in boat speed. So hopefully it'll come back and we'll be able to keep making some progress. But yeah, the beautiful starlit night. First time I've seen a night like this in a long time.
are St Kilda. It's kind of a mecca for British sailors going around Britain to get out to St Kilda. The weather doesn't always allow it, but we've got a flat car. Unfortunately, we had to motor the last 10 miles in, but it's going to be a beautiful day for exploring this iconic island. We're 50 miles out into the North Atlantic Ocean from the coast of the Outer Hebrides now. It's beautiful out here. There's loads and loads of birds and gannets and fulmars, seals popping up and looking at us. We're not the only ones here. There's already a yacht in the bay and there's also a small ship, which I think is a supply ship because there is a, a warden based out here. And I think to do some maintenance on the radio masts and things that are out here as well. Ready? I can see the bottom, yeah. St Kilda is a dual UNESCO World Heritage Site for both nature and culture. Internationally recognised as one of the largest seabird breeding colonies in Europe, St Kilda is no less famous for its human history. A community existed here for at least 4,000 years, before the final 36 islanders voted to leave in 1930, due to life on the isolated island no longer being sustainable. There is no time to catch up on our missed night's sleep. This is the best weather day for exploring, so we're going to make the most of it. St Kilda today you can actually walk through the abandoned village. I'm on the main high street now and they've restored a lot of the houses and one of them you can go into is a museum and then the rest have been left as ruined. But one of the things that I really like is how each little house has a plaque in front of the door stating who lived there. Like a lot of the islands that we visited in Scotland, the people of St Kilda were crofters, so they ran and managed their own small holding farms, which is an incredibly tough life. And unlike the other islands that we visited, they couldn't rely on the sea because the waters around these islands are so unpredictable and we're so far out into the Atlantic Ocean that it's often too rough for them to fish. So they actually harvested the seabirds because there are thousands, in fact, I think about a million of them on the island. So every single year they would kill thousands of seabirds for not only their meat, but also their oil and their feathers. One of the things that we noticed as we sailed into the bay was all these unusual stone structures with turf roofs and they are dotted all over the island and all up the hillside that we can see. Apparently there's over 1400 of them on the island and actually researchers don't know exactly what they were for because now everybody who lived here has actually passed away so there's no one to actually ask but what they think they were for is for storing the birds after they'd caught them to dry them and use them for food over the winter. So these are storehouses and they're built so that the wind can pass through them and keep everything dried out through the winter. It's a steep climb. The view from here is amazing though. You can see 
all of the Outer Hebrides. It is so crystal clear today. The whole of the Outer Hebrides chain on the horizon. Florence down in the bay with turquoise water over that glorious sand bottom in the bay below us. And hardly a breath of wind. It's an absolutely perfect day to be up here on St Kilda. We really have nailed it with the forecast. It's only about a month and a half ago that we were up on Terransay Island at the peak having a wee dram of Scottish whiskey to celebrate and we could see St Kilda and we thought then that we'd be able to get out here but the weather has just conspired against us for the whole of the summer and now at the end of summer it's finally come good. Patience. The highest point on the island. <laughs> I have to say we nearly backed out of that given the fact that we both had about three hours sleep last night but yeah as always pretty out of breath. <laughs> Worth it though. <laughs> but yeah amazing views I'm really glad that we came up here. I haven't got any whiskey with us today though. <gasps> so I don't boat. think I could handle it. <laughs> I'll just save that for later. I'm overheating Wishing I'd worn shorts, <laughs> but man, it's gorgeous. Stunning day, stunning place. The next day was a reminder of just how changeable and unpredictable the weather is out here on St Kilda. Our view changed from clear horizons to dense fog. Well, it's a different day today. Still, we've got beautiful blue sky above us and a bit of sun, but the fog has been rolling in from the north all morning. It seems like it's rolling up the northern side of the island and then flowing over the top and down. But to the leeward of St Kilda, it's actually creating this hole in the fog. So we can see down to leeward, we've got clear sea, but then either side, it's just dense fog. It's giving it a really kind of eerie feel with all the rock formations and the jagged rocks and all the birds flying around and then a bit of added sense of, I don't know, mysticism with the mist rolling in. We've walked to the southern end of the island this morning and I think it's even more gorgeous than what we saw yesterday. Just love all of the sheer jagged cliff faces and the bird life and I think it's partly the fog 
that makes it feel much more wild and remote today, but it's also poss possibly partly the fact that all of the other boats have cleared out of the bay and we're the only ones left. But we're going to be clearing out ourselves probably later this afternoon and sailing overnight back towards the mainland. Well, St Kilda is supposed to be difficult to get to and we almost had it too easy getting a really good weather window to sail here and enjoy it in the sun and it's now coming back to bite us. The wind has really picked up much more than was forecast. The fog is just streaming in and looking out of the bay, well you can't see anything looking out of the bay, it's dense fog. But the forecast isn't really for it to get any better tomorrow and as you can see the boat is now bouncing around. So we've decided since the boat is moving around we're not going to sleep very well here tonight so we may as well be out at sea tonight and sailing back to where we want to go. So we're actually going to set sail, go south down to Tovamore. With this amount of wind we're probably just going to pull a head sail out and go gently downwind through the night, through the fog and hopefully in about 20-21 hours time we'll be somewhere that's a bit more comfortable for a night's sleep. I'm not sure that we've ever had such a quick goodbye to an island. Normally it lingers on the horizon behind us for a few hours at least, but this time St Kilda just disappeared within a couple of minutes. So yeah, bye, goodbye St Kilda. The wind was really starting to howl in the anchorage because we were getting a few downdrafts from the hills, but it's nice that it's not actually that much worse out here. I was beginning to think it was going to be at a horrendous sail back. The swell's obviously bigger. Uh, but the wind isn't too bad, we've probably only got about 20 knots tops. Since we've got fog about, it's nice to actually have a working radar for a change. So this is going to give us a lot more peace of mind sailing back. We haven't actually been in foggy conditions or done much sailing in the dark so much on this round Britain, but uh, certainly a lot more peace of mind sailing out here into the fog with a working radar. And we can even see on here, it's also got an AIS target there, which is Another boat coming into St Kilda. Pretty useful bit of kit for safety sailing in fog. We're setting off late into the evening so that we time our arrival in the sound as we're passing the Outer Hebrides because that's where the tide is the strongest on this trip. And so we're straight into night watches again, which means I get to go to bed for three hours. <laughs> Sleep well, beautiful. <laughs> Good 
It's actually not too bad out here. In fact, it'd be really nice if it wasn't foggy. The sun's trying to peek through the fog. It is still foggy, but the visibility is a bit better than it was when we set off. But last night was a lot easier than we expected and the sea safe is now calming down. which should make it a lot easier to go through the sound which we are just approaching. morning this morning we just got a misty sunrise over the islands of the Outer Hebrides these are just south of Barra and we decided to come through this sound sound of Pabe just south of ba Barra rather than go through the more direct route which was the sound of Barra further north because this enabled us to time coming through this narrow gap in daylight I know it's still a bit foggy but we were hoping the fog would have gone on too and also through these sounds there are a lot of lobster pot boys so we really wanted some light to be able to see them to make sure we didn't get tangled up with them so that's the reason we come down slightly further down the chain to come through here works better with timing for daylight works better with the tides as well and hopefully therefore we can see the lobster pots to avoid them Well, as you can see, the fog has cleared just as we came through the Outer Hebrides and it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day, but unfortunately there is no wind. So we've had to turn the engine on and it's 52 miles across to Tobermory where we were planning to go from here. But we just little, picked up a little bit of phone signal as we came through as well. So we managed to get the latest weather forecast and that shows that it's pretty much going to be like this today, very light winds, but tomorrow there is much better breeze. So we just made a decision to change plans. We're just gonna head around the island here and anchor at Vatase Beach where we were before. Enjoy that for the day. And then we'll actually sail on tomorrow when there's a bit more breeze. Cause today, I think to do 52 miles, we'd have to motor a bit. We wouldn't really be able to just drift along. It would take too long. But just 10 minutes later, we spotted this and changed destination again. What a spot, but you might notice that this is not Vatase Bay where we were intending to head to. This is actually even more beautiful, and this is also just 10 minutes around the corner of motoring from where we ran out wind just over there. We were passing it and we couldn't resist just changing plan and stopping in here. It's absolutely beautiful, it's quiet, there's hardly a breath of wind, beautiful sandy beach, turquoise water. The water is crystal clear, France is anchored in 10 meters, you can see the anchor clear as anything on the bottom. This is the island of Sandre, just south of Barra. It's uninhabited apart from the sheep, and on a day like today, it is the perfect secluded anchorage.
couldn't resist the call of the peak on the middle of the island to go and get the view looking down over Florence in the bay. It is absolutely gorgeous up here. It's an absolutely stunning day in here. You can see it's an absolute flat calm out to sea. Well, sorry, that's not out to sea, that's towards the mainland. You just can't see it because I think there's fog on the horizon. But out to sea, out into the Atlantic and out towards St Kilda is solid fog. You can't see anything past the Outer Hebrides. And then if you look south down to Mingalay and the islands down to the southern end of the Outer Hebrides, the uninhabited islands, you can just see the fog bank rolling in across it. It's absolutely beautiful. I cannot believe we've got this weather now after so much bad weather we've had in time in Scotland. It's been really worth lingering. I was kind of quite keen to head south. I kind of was fed up with the bad weather, but Amy was much more keen to, to stay up here and hang on and keep fingers crossed for a late summer. And it's been worth it. Next time, we say goodbye to Scotland and turn Forrester's bow south down the Irish Sea. For extra updates in between these bi-weekly videos and to find out what we're up to in real time, head over to Patreon and join the crew. Of course, don't forget to subscribe to make sure that you don't miss the next episode here on YouTube. Continuing our voyage on Florence would not be possible without the support of our patrons. Thank you to all of you, and especially to our star patrons. 